Hi everyone, it's Allison in my violin studio and today I want to talk a little bit about grace notes. Uh, grace notes are an ornament and uh, we use them a lot. Uh, the first grace notes that show up in the Suzuki are towards the end of the first book. Um, minuet number three has some. Um, I can't remember offhand. Gavot by Gossick has some. All right, so grace notes are not difficult to play, but it really helps to, there's, there's usually a couple little questions people have that, that can throw you right off. Um, so the first, the first thing is remember that it's an ornament. It is, not, it is not an essential part of the melody line. If you are uncomfortable with a grace note, you can leave it out. Master your piece, come back, add it in when you're comfortable. Okay? It, it won't undo the piece. Um, although on some pieces we're so accustomed to hearing a certain ornament in a certain place that without it, it's kind of like somebody goes out, you know, a lady we know well who always wears lipstick and she goes out without lipstick. It's like, oh my goodness, is there an emergency? But um, but it's not essential. So this uh, minuet number three, we've got... There's a couple of different things, different ways of doing a grace note. Uh, I'm going to talk about the most standard form first, which is the grace note that comes before the beat. Um, because it's an ornament, there's no one correct way to do an ornament. It's a question of taste and um, what you prefer. Um, but there are some conventions that you have to respect a little bit. Um, the first question is, if it comes before the beat, uh, where, how, do you, how do you calculate that in terms of rhythm? So the answer is, we're going to steal a little bit of time from the previous note. Okay, So we're going to carve out. The previous note is not going to last for its full value. And I just kind of left it a little early. Um, the simplest way to practice that, I think, is one, two, three, two, one. Make sure you say one on the open A. One. One. Just try that a few times. One. So one, two, three, two, one. And you will kind of probably be able to place it without thinking about how much of the previous note am I carving out. It's probably in technical terms, if it's a short note, you're probably going to cut it in half. And if it's a longer note, you might carve out a quarter or an eighth of its value. Um, it's not always terribly helpful to make that precise calculation. If you just kind of do it by how it feels and how it sounds, uh, making sure that the actual fact of the matter is correct, you're probably fine. Now, it is possible to also put, so this is the second way of doing a grace note, you could also put that grace note on the beat, in which case you're delaying the arrival of the actual note, and, and in musical terms, you're, you may be creating a dissonance because, of course, the bass line, the piano, or if you're playing with an orchestra, the bass will have moved to a new chord, and by playing a grace note on the beat, you're playing a note that might be creating a little bit of a dissonance, so that's considered to be a little bit of a, a little bit of a thrill, you know, in musical terms. And then when your actual note arrives, it's kind of like, oh. so that's the musical intention. And you could also discuss how short or long that grace note should be. Or all right. But in that case, if it's on the beat, you don't need to carve it out of the previous note, so it's, it's quite simple. Um, I have to say, it's a little bit rare to be doing grace notes on the beat in your early days at the violin. So if you're in the first couple of Suzuki books, you're probably playing it before the book, before the beat. It depends on your teacher, you know, and what they like. Um, there's also grace notes in the Gossip. This one I've heard done both ways. I've heard it before the beat. I like it before the beat. I'm a before the beat kind of girl, but I'll slow it down. One, two, three, four. See that? One, two, three. So your note, this is a note with a dot on it, so we're not holding it anywhere near its full value, so it's pretty easy to put that grace in. And in actual technical terms, 
basically as soon as you've put the finger and you start your bow and you might be speeding up a little bit One. my bow is slow and I might speed up a little bit when the real note arrives don't worry about being able to do that but it may happen and you might be able to because we we want the we want the real note to be more important than the grace about that too much. The important thing is the real note arrives on the beat. Now, the second way of doing it is if you put the grace note directly on the beat, in which case, one, two, two, one, two, in which case, you start your note on the beat, and pretty much as soon as you've started it, you let your second finger thump along right away. Okay, so that's it. It's not really difficult. There's um, a little bit of a different grace note situation in the waltz by Brahms. In, in Suzuki Book 2, you have... Okay, we've got grace notes that come after a note. Um, and if you look at it on the page, really the only reason that those are grace notes after the note is because the slur goes from the first note to the grace notes. And then you have a new bow for the second note. If you see what I mean... They could have been, they could have been grace notes of the second note in a very ordinary way, down, up, except, that sounds so different. It's like not the same piece at all. The, the, in this case, that having that grace note come after the note kind of gives you a really unique feeling to this piece. a little bit tricky to do. So what we're doing here is we're carving out a little bit of time from the f first original note. One, two. You've got to get to that second note on time or that'll sound bad. So don't go one, two. No, no, no. Yeah, um, you're probably going to divide your note into a half or three quarters or something. One, two, three, two, three, two, three. It may be helpful to think of how far you go in the bow. You might say, okay, I've got this much bow for my note. I'm going to do the grace note when I get here. So I start here, and when I get here, I do the grace note, and that's the end where the next note comes. So, see, so you're, you're keeping a couple inches for that. So that's something to, uh, that's a different way of looking at it. That can be really effective. So, don't worry about grace notes, have fun with them, and uh, I'll see you soon.